Okay, students, so this is page 113 of the notes, and we're going to actually be doing inferences for correlation and regression, meaning we're going to be doing hypothesis testing in regressional analysis. So one hypothesis test that we can do is for the correlation coefficient. Now, before when we calculated the coalition, cor the co ah, I can't talk today, the correlation coefficient, it was R and that is the sample correlation coefficient. But when we talk about the population correlation coefficient, we're going to use the Greek letter rho. Now it looks kind of like a little uh, funny p, but it is indeed called the Greek letter rho. Okay? Recall that in a sample statistic, if you have r, then its population parameter that goes along with it is rho. If you've got a, then it goes to alpha, b goes to beta, and y hat equals a plus bx is y plus alpha plus beta x in population terms. So just remember that population is always going to be with Greek letters, okay? So in hypothesis testing for correlation coefficient, we always set rho equal to zero, meaning there is no correlation. And then the alternative is less than zero, meaning there is a negative correlation. Greater than zero, meaning there's a positive correlation. And not equal to zero means there's some kind of correlation going on, but we're not sure what. Now I'm going to go through and teach you the critical value method. Um, but then later we'll go through and we'll see how to do it with the p-value method. So if you already are familiar with the p-value method and you'd like to use that, go ahead and feel free to use the p-value method while I work the critical value method. But be aware later on in the notes we're going to hit this again just using our calculators and the p-value method. So in the old-fashioned method, the by-hand method, we'll do a critical value with our t-table, a test statistic, a decision, and conclusion, just like all of our other hypothesis testing. It's a five-step process. So please read through this, and then let's get to an example. So our example is 10.3, and basically we have some data. Now you would enter this into your calculator into list 1, and then the y's into list 2 to get these sample statistics that I've already calculated. Notice that the correlation coefficient is already calculated for us. And we want to test the claim that rho is greater than zero, and we want to use an alpha level or a level of significance of 1%. So step one is to set up your hypothesis. H naught, rho, meaning the correlation coefficient for the population, is equal to zero, meaning no correlation. And the alternative they wanted us to test the claim that there was a positive correlation going on between the x, meaning partial pressure, and the y, partial pressure, would be the breathing pure oxygen. It's a medical example, and you know that I don't know much about medical stuff, so I'm just going to do the statistics for you, and all you nursing majors can read all about it. So here we're testing for a positive correlation. That's step one. Step two in the critical value method is to, of course, look up your critical value. We need to use a T with 0.01 level of significance, and degrees of freedom is N minus 2 because we've got two variables going on. So we're going to do N minus 2. N is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 samples were taken. So we'll have in, order, uh, in other words, three degrees of freedom. So again, you would get out your t-table. This is a one-tailed test, and you look up your degrees of freedom, which is, again, three. You should be seeing a t critical value of 4.541. Draw the picture if you like. Some people save the picture for the next step, but it doesn't really matter. This was a positive test, so it's a positive critical value, so it's a right-tailed test. Shade your rejection region. There we go. Step three in the critical value method is to calculate your test statistic. Our test statistic is T equals R, the correlation coefficient for the sample, times the square root of N minus 2 over the square root of 1 minus r squared. Remember, r squared is the 
coefficient of determination. So we'll plug everything in here. R was 0 0.902769 times the square root n is 5 minus 2 all over the square root of 1 minus. Now you can put in R and then square it. I already squared it, so I'll put in the squared version of R, which is 0.814913. Okay? Calculate all that out. Remember to watch your calculation steps. I get a test statistic of 3.63531. And where does that fall in our rejection region picture? It does not fall in the rejection region. So step four is your decision. So we are going to fail to reject H0. Step five, of course, is to write your conclusion. So we'll, we will write our conclusion. And instead of writing it out and covering it all up with my hand, I'll show you my one that I did previously. Uh, based on the evidence, there is not a positive correlation between air cells in the lungs when breathing natural air and when breathing pure oxygen at alpha equals 0.01. Okay, so that's your conclusion, and that's the critical value method. Some of you may be looking at this stuff over here and thinking, oh my gosh, what did she do? Well, she did the p-value method on the side here. So if you were doing the p-value method with me, you should have got a p-value method of 0 0.01793. Okay, and I know I'm going a little bit fast through this, but that's because you've already established the skills of hypothesis testing in general. You're already familiar with a five-step process. All that's changed is we got a different parameter that we're working with, and we have a different test statistic, okay? We're testing correlation now instead of means. So that is a row hypothesis test. Stay tuned for more linear regression.